Hey guys, DIY Maniac John P here. We're going to be working on the mountain bike today. And what we're going to be doing is looking at an issue I have with my PNW Rainier 3 dropper post, seat post. This dropper post is only about a month old and it's developed a bit of a rattle. So when I'm off the saddle and I'm riding and I'm going over some bumpy terrain, you hear this rattle noise and I can reproduce it by hand if you listen. So it's not, it's not super loud, but definitely noticeable when you're on the trail. Now there is a fix for this and it is a recognized fix by PNW. I reached out to them and they told me what I need to do. And it basically involves dismantling the dropper post like you would do for a typical service with one extra step of removing a cartridge that's inside and put in a single wrap of electrical tape around it. Yes that is a recognized repair by the manufacturer, the addition of electrical tape. Yes, this is a $300 dropper. Um, and I was told if I were to send it back to them under warranty, they do have a great warranty for your warranty. That's pretty much what they would do. I mean, that does impress me um, at electrical tapes a fix, but we're gonna give it a go and we're gonna see if that resolves the issue. I wanna point out why I was not fully satisfied with how to repair it. I want to say that PNW customer care was outstanding and really took the time to address all my questions and concerns. And once again, this is a recognized repair by PNW. They said doing this repair ourselves will not void the warranty. I have that in writing. So guys, let's follow along the steps of getting the dropper out of the bike and then doing the recommended repair by the manufacturer. So follow along. In order to be able to remove the dropper, we're going to have to disconnect the dropper lever from the handlebar. So with the PNW Rainier and the Loom dropper lever, a three millimeter Allen to loosen up the retaining clamp. And that's going to allow us to remove the dropper from the handlebar. Once we remove that three mil millimeter Allen key, it drops the lever off of the, the handlebar clamp and that's now leaving it free. So in my case, and most likely in yours as well, the cables are run internally through the frame. So here we could see our dropper lever with its cable runs into the frame body. So this extra length is going to allow us to feed that into the frame as we pull the seat post out of the bike. And you'll see that as I do it. So we're going to do that right now. With our cable disconnected, the next thing we're going to want to do is loosen the seat post clamp. Every bike could be different. So you'll loosen your clamp on the seat post and this will allow the seat post to slide up and down. We're going to take our dropper lever cable, hold it and support it. And while we pull the dropper out, we're going to feed the cable through the frame of the bike. And that's now going to expose the bottom of the dropper where we could see where the cable is attached. I'm going to bring the camera in closer so you can see how that removes. Here's our cable running to the bottom of our dropper, which is our release. There's a barrel connector on the cable that gets fed into the dropper. And the way we're going to release that is if you look on the bottom side of the dropper, manually we could pull this little lever back, which is going to bring our barrel forward to give us the slack we need to remove it from that little hook. So I'll show you that as we go so finger pull it back you can see it releases the barrel pull the barrel out and bring the cable forward and then our cable is released the next step now the dropper is off the bike is to get the saddle off of the dropper so you're going to remove your two Allen, <coughs> Allen bolts for the adjustable clamp to release the saddle from the post. Once we have all that done, we're going to loosen the clamp over here on the top. It's done counterclockwise. You just turn it and that basically holds on to the dust seal. We unscrew that and we're going to slide it up as such. Then, once that's done, we're going to be removing the lower clamp. With an adjustable wrench, 
we're going to put it on to the bottom and we're going to be turning counterclockwise. This might, if this is the first time you're doing it, this may be tight. To give yourself a little more leverage, you could take your left hand, hold on to the seat clamp, and then with your adjustable wrench, break it free. Once we've broken it free, we can loosen it by hand. Once it is fully de-threaded, we're going to pull it out by about an inch. And that's going to expose small Allen set screws, two millimeter screws that we're going to go and remove. With our two millimeter Allen, we're going to remove the retaining bolts from the actuator. There are two of them. You will unthread fully and they will slide out. As such, make sure you put them somewhere safe as not to lose them. Magnetic tray always recommended. Remember, there are two. Both must be removed. Once the retaining screws are removed from the actuator, the actuator can be pulled off and put aside with its rubber washer. Make sure not to lose it. And now the housing, sanction housing, can be removed from the dropper shaft as such. You want to be mindful of these multiple brass roller pins that are just loosely fit into notches. They are only held in with retention of grease. They could easily fall out and if you lose them that won't be fun looking for them. So keep that in mind. As well when you look inside the post you could see how the adjustability works on the dropper for adjusting your different drops. On this one, the Rainier 3, it's a 125 millimeter drop, but we could drop it down in different increments. With everything dismantled, we could really see now where that uh, rattling is coming from. Over here with the cartridge inside the post, you could see where that knocking is coming from. So as we take it apart, I'm assuming the addition of the one layer of electrical tape around the cartridge takes up that gap uh, and it recre at least creates a buffer. But we're going to see how that works. Be mindful, in the shaft here, we have an insert that comes out, can easily drop out. There's a ball end on the end that feeds out, and flat end on the other. So flat end would go in first when reassembling. So you could take that aside out and put it aside somewhere safe. In order to get the cartridge out, on the end of the post, there's a 3 millimeter Allen retainer that we're going to have to remove counterclockwise and that's going to allow us to slide the cartridge out of the topper housing so let's go ahead and remove that with that removed we have a metal washer and our screw so put those aside and that's going to allow us to slide the cartridge body out where we're going to be putting our single wrap of electrical tape. Before we proceed to put the electrical tape, we're going to clean the surface of the cartridge to get any contaminants off for better adhesion of the electrical tape. You're then going to take your electrical tape and according to PNW, a single wrap around. We'll try it in the middle. We'll see if that lessens the noise. If not, we could try two single wraps, one at the bottom, one at the top to see what works best. So let's find out together what does is the, gives the best result. So let's test this out to see if the single wrap is enough to deaden that vibration, that rattle. So we're gonna put the cartridge back in the way it came out. We're gonna slide it in. I can already see that the electrical tape is taking up some of that slack because it's getting a little, wow. Still a little bit of a rattle, more near the end here. I could still hear it. So I'm wondering maybe if we're better off also putting a single wrap here. Let's give that a try. So we have the three bands of electric tape, one layered in the three different areas. And we're gonna see if that takes up the slack. 
So we're going to slide the cartridge in. You want to be careful as you're sliding in not so it doesn't grab the tape and peel the tape off. So we're nice in there. We're in there. And let's see. Wow. The play is far lessened. We're not getting as much play, hardly any, and definitely no noise. So it looks like that. That was a fix. So let's put this back together and we're going to see on the bike how it plays out. Keep it in mind, guys, if you haven't done a service yet on your dropper, this is the time to do it. Clean off all the grease, reapply new grease inside the housing as well. Clean it all out, put some new grease. Mine's only a month old. I'm not going to do that now. That'll be an end of year service. Next part of assembly are little brass rods. We're going to put them into their slots where they were. Keeping in mind where your height adjustment was, if you still have it at full travel, then you'll want it at that top notch there. And as you can see, it steps down depending how you change the travel on it. So you, I hope you kept track of that when you were um, taking it apart. So what we'll do now is I'll go ahead and put all those back in, and then we're going to slide the body housing over. Not forgetting after, before putting the actuator on to reinstall this rod, but I'll walk you through that. Once you have everything aligned and we have the lower and the upper put back into position, the next part we're going to want to do is put the actuator back on. But first, let's not remember our actuator rod. Rounded area, flat edge, rounded goes to the outside. So we'll slide that inside on the bottom. We'll get that in place. And next will be the actuator. Don't forget your rubber washer. And that's going to be slid over top as well. And we're going to slide that into place. So once again, rubber washer, actuator, we're going to slide it on. Once that is done, the next step is going to be to put those two small Allen retaining screws back in. So you have the two holes here. I'll position you guys. And we're going to drop those back into place and we're going to tighten them up hand snug keep in mind they are small there already is some loctite on them you can always clean up the old loctite and apply new if needed so i'm going to go ahead and do that now once that is done we could thread the actuator back into the lower tube push the lower tube down till it meets the threads and then start hand tightening to make sure the threads are catching and we're not cross threading anything. Once we get it hand snug, we could take our adjustable wrench, put it on. Remember the trick I told you, grab it by the saddle head and we could turn it clockwise to tighten. Doesn't need to be super tight, just nice and snug as such and we are now fully assembled if you're like me and you like to test bench test stuff to make sure you did everything right what you could do is take your thumb on the actuator we're going to mimic the cable being in place we're going to pull back on the actuator put the post on the workbench keep it nice and straight push down to mimic retracting it make sure it holds in place thumb off and then we actuate it by doing the same action by pulling the thumb back and we'll see pops right back out. So we know we got a fully operating dropper that we had when we took it apart, hopefully minus the rattle. So I'm not gonna do this on camera, but we're gonna put the saddle back on and then I'll put it back into the bike and we're gonna see if that pesky rattle's gone. I'm not gonna show you every step of putting it back together because it's pretty much reversal of what you've already seen. But I think this is a key thing to highlight of how to get the cable back on. So once again, you have this barrel terminator termination here that's got to fit in. So with your finger, actuate, take your barrel. You'll have to manipulate it in to the little hook. Once it's in like it is now, you could release the actuator and allow the exposed cable to slide through that slot which is right there, and the ferrule to fit in, and now you're in. With everything assembled, 
Now we're going to give it the test. We're going to see if we have that pesky rattle that's still there. So we'll grab the saddle. We'll give it a shake. Wow, much, much less. Hardly noticeable. I mean, there's still a little play, but there's always going to be play in a dropper post. But as far as the amount of play and the noise, guys, I think that might be solved. Obviously, the true test will be I'm out on the trail, but I can tell right away this is definitely going to be um, a resolution to the problem I was having. Now, do I think this is a step or a procedure that should be taken on a $300 dropper post by a reputable company like PNW? No. Uh, putting electrical tape? <sighs> Listen. At the end of the day, it solved the problem, but I really think PNW needs to go back to their drawing board and either come out with a recognized part that could be put in, whether it's made out of rubber, like a sleeve to go over the cartridge. Um, you know, but I'll leave that up to them and hopefully they'll watch this video and they'll and they'll be able to make some judgment calls on that. Anyway, guys, so if you're having that pesky rattle on your dropper, PNW, maybe applicable to other dropper posts, I can't say, so I don't want to speak to that. This is definitely a repair that will work. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down below. I'll be happy to help. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you at the next video.